Welcome back to Morbidly Bewitched. In the last video, I took you to Russia to discuss the unusual preservation of Vladimir Lenin's body. And I'm going to stick with the Russians just for now. Some viewers may find this episode slightly disturbing with some of the images that I'm about to attach. Um, it's the Russian famine of 1921. Stay tuned. So Russia has faced many famines over the years because of the size of the land. The land's vast and they don't have the infrastructure to work the land. So most farmers work hand to mouth. But in 1921, the famine came because of mainly a really bad drought. But it came with extra horrors. Probably the same that happened in the other famines, but in this case, 1921, they just so happened to be documented. The death toll for 1921 famine in Russia was extremely hard to gauge, but they do believe it was um, in the estimate figure of about 5 million Russians. So th this is huge. So like I say, the cause of this famine was multifaceted. There was infrastructure, productivity, drought, crop failure and the drought was so severe that just to give you an idea of figures in Samara it's estimated that in the month of May 38.8 mils of rainfall uh, usually is recorded in that year in May 0 0.3 mils was recorded and this drought just devastated the lands it swept right across even into the Ukraine and people began to die. Uh, the weak were left behind to die in their homes in the countryside while the rest of the family members did what they had to do. They moved towards the cities because they felt like at least there they could probably get work. There would be more availability for food but unfortunately everybody had that same idea for Moscow and Kiev. They, they thought we'll, we'll, we'll get something but everybody had the same idea. So if anything the cities were almost worse especially in terms of just what humans are prepared to do under these circumstances. People started to eat anything that they could. Grains left behind, grass, tree bark, twigs, acorns, anything they could. They even started to eat the flesh of dead and decaying animals because unfortunately the animals suffered as well. It's just I don't even want to think about. But um, yeah, so they were even instructed by authorities, government officials instructed the people to dig up the bones of the deceased, grind them down into a fine dust-like powder and use it to make a substitute bread because they believed it even had 25% more nutritional value than rye. It tasted and smelt horrible but people did it and because people were having to eat whatever was possibly available to them then this let rise to species specific diseases as people's immune systems depleted in strength so influenza cholera dysentery even the bubonic plague made an appearance Th these people were getting ravaged by the environment their dire circumstances. Nobody was strong enough to cope with this devastating drought in 1921. The human body can only take so much and 
American relief workers were sent in to try and help the people, along with Russian academics. This is when the true scale of the horror was uh, recorded and reported back. Cannibalism. The worst affected area would have been around and highly noted as the Volga River, which would have been denser in population and of course that inevitably results in harsher experiences. Starving peasants were observed digging up the bodies of the recently deceased and eating the flesh from the bones. And in trying times, even under these circumstances, humans will exploit others. There was a recorded black market for the purchase of human tissue. So you could go and buy body parts or exchange something for somebody to consume. There was even one woman who refused to give up the body of her dearly departed husband because she said she wanted to keep him to eat. Fair play. An American aid worker reported that families were killing and eating fathers, grandfathers and children. Sausages were being made out of human flesh and a discussion was recorded and this one, I'm sorry, but I, I actually love it, was recorded as two neighbours were arguing and one shouted at the other, I'll make sausages out of you. And that's probably one of those occasions where she or he meant it. Over one million tons of grain was sent over to try and help the crisis that these people were facing. But believe it or not, it didn't actually do that much good um, because it even caused further fights. But the drought itself broke the next year and families went back to their homesteads in the countryside no doubt to bury their dead that was left behind as well and try and pick up some kind of semblance of life from what they had just endured which would have been fueled by complete nightmares and terror that you would take to your own grave because what people have to do to survive would would shock most and sometimes I think the line of civilization as we know it is extremely thin and what separates us from animals is really nothing more than the green money. If we didn't have currency, we didn't have money, we would just be the exact same as any other species on the planet. You take away the economy, you take away civilization. And there isn't a soul on earth, if they were in that circumstance themselves, wouldn't do the exact same thing. But what do you think? What would you do? Would you allow yourself to starve or would you consume human flesh? Join me in my next video where I'm going to be sticking with unusual cases from across the world. Stay tuned. Subscribe and I will see you soon.